Hello and welcome, my name is Bailey Moss and in today's video I'll be showing how to set up and configure an attachment extractor online service with SharePoint for Dynamics 365 and Power Apps. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and hit that like button to get the latest how-tos and new features for all of our products. But all right, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing you want to do is open up our website, which is going to be www.mscrm-addons.com. Uh, from there, you'll need to register if you don't already have an account or log in if, if you do. Uh, so I'll go ahead and log in here. Once logged in, you're going to navigate to products and then attachment extractor. From there, you'll hit start trial slash service setup. And finally, start configuration. Once the configuration page, page loads, you'll go ahead and hit the add service or plus icon. So I'll go ahead and hit that there. And then the first thing to do is to set up your connection profile. And it's going to be the connection between Attachment Extractor, SharePoint, and your Dynamics 365 or Power Apps instance. So I'll go ahead and select connection profile. From there, you'll need to select your connection type. For online, for Dynamics 365 and Power Apps online, we do recommend server to server authentication. However, you can also use app access if needed. If on premise, you'll be using IFD. So the first bit of information we'll need in this case is going to be the CRM URL. So I do recommend having your Dynamics instance open in the background. So I'll go ahead and navigate to there. And what we're going to be grabbing is from HTTPS to .com for that CRM URL. So I'll go ahead and paste that there. Next, we hit we can hit Retrieve Organizations, and this will open up a Microsoft login screen. One thing to note here is that the minimum security requirement is going to be a system administrator within your Dynamics 365 or Power Apps instance. So I'll go ahead and hit sign in. And as you can see, it's it's retrieved my um, Dynamics 365 organization. You can see the unique name there and the service URL. Um, so next we need to uh, connect to SharePoint. So I'll go ahead and hit set up SharePoint connection here. And it's going to be the same Microsoft login screen. In my case, I'll be using the same user. However, you can use a separate or different user. All right, and once it's pulled back that SharePoint connection, I'll go ahead and hit verify connection and save profile. And this will take just a moment, but it's checking the connection between SharePoint, Dynamics, and the attachment extractor service, as well as the permissions. All right, now that it's verified the connection and saved the profile, we can go ahead and move on. Uh, so the first thing to do here is going to be to set the service name. And as you can see, it's defaulted to the unique instance name of my Dynamics instance. Um, however, you can customize it. So I'll go ahead and put US Demo 18 AE. One thing to note, though, is that once set, this cannot be changed unless you delete and recreate the service. Next, we can select our attachment extractor instance in which the service is going to run. Um, but it does automatically default to the instance with the best bandwidth. However, it can be changed before or after creating your service. Next, we'll define the extraction mode. In this case, SharePoint Online only allows for attachments to be extracted. If you'd like to set up an email content extraction, you'll need Azure Blob, and I will be producing a separate video on that. From there, we'll select the storage system, which in this case, of course, is going to be SharePoint. And then next, we'll be defining the SharePoint integration. So for our case, I'm going to be using CRM integrated SharePoint, which leverages the document management set up within Dynamics um, or Power Apps. However, you can also set a specific SharePoint site plus library um, to set a daily or weekly folder for the extracted attachments. Next, we need to define the storage option for entities without document management enabled. So for those entities that haven't been set up in document management, you can either set them to not extract or specify a SharePoint library. Next, we'll define what attachments are being extracted. In this case, it defaults to email attachments and note attachments. However, uh, you can also select appointment attachments. Um, from there, you can set subfolders for email, note, and appointment attachments. And then finally, we'll set the data processing. So you can set up an attachment extractor service to copy. Um, copy the data to, to SharePoint and keep um, the existing data in CRM or extract, in which case it's going to delete the data in CRM and extract to SharePoint. 
So I'll go ahead and select extract and I've checked the box for I've read and understand what this means and want to continue extracting content from our environment. And go ahead and select extract. And then from there I can set a few filters. So this is going to be the minimum attachment size filter which is defining the smallest file size that you'd like to extract from your CRM instance. In this case it's defaulted to 64 kilobytes however that can be um, changed based on your requirements. And then next we're going to set an older than filter or age filter and this is based on the modified date of the record um, which the minimum is going to be of course zero hours but it can also be set hours um, days weeks months and years so in this case I'm going to set only extract attachments older than one hour and of course once again that's based on the modified date and then finally we have enable text only emails and timeline which is only relevant for Azure blob storage and then we have some advanced options but I'll be skipping those um, and have a separate video on the advanced setup options for attachment extractor. So I'll go ahead and hit save service here. And what this is going to do, and go ahead and click OK. And what this is going to do is it's going to import the needed solutions to your Dynamics or Power Apps instance. It's going to set up the security roles and create the service. A fair warning though, this can take up to an hour or longer, so I recommend uh, grabbing coffee or tea or maybe taking lunch and just letting this run through. All right, once the service setup has completed, there's a few next steps. First of which is um, to start your service because the service is not automatically started. That way, so you can verify your um, settings before starting extraction. Um, and so depending on your license, if you have a licensed service, the extraction will automatically start as soon as, um, as, soon as the service is started. If you have a trial, you can select your service and start it, um, but you will, need to, you will only have the ability to single item extract or run an extraction analysis on certain records. And that's to test your settings before, um, or test the behavior of the attachment extractor service before purchasing a license or subscription. And finally, you can check your license status, so whether or not you have a trial um, or full licensed uh, within the configuration page. So I'll go ahead and hit OK here and start the service. As you can see, the service is now running, as the status defines running. Um, so yeah, now I'll go over a few of the configuration options once you have an existing running service. Um, first of which, of course, is going to be the Add Service or Plus icon. Next, we have the Configure Service button, which allows you to view and change your initial settings uh, for the Attachment Extractor service. Next, we have the View and Install License option that I mentioned that you can view your license, whether it's a trial or full um, production license. Next, we have Service Logs. And from there, we have View Version Info, which allows you to see the solution versions you have installed in your instance, as well as update those via the service. From there, we have the Stop and Start Service buttons. And then we have View Progress and History, which allows you to um, view your extraction progress, as well as the um, kind of view of overall of how much data you've extracted using this service. Next, we have the Reset Extraction or Revert Extraction button. Um, and then from there, we have extraction analysis and single item extract, which allows you, of course, to check and test your settings um, with single records. But yeah, that's pretty much it. My contact information, along with links to related knowledge base articles and webinars, can be found in the description below. But yeah, thank you for watching.